Hey guys, welcome back. Trying out a new format today in which I want to discuss one topic. We'll pick up one topic and go into depth of it. So it's more like a podcast thing as well, but just me at this point. So let's just go ahead and discuss about the recent trends of Web3 and a lot of new technologies coming in in Web2 world as well. And I'm considering Web3 at this point just as a new technology, not as a revolution or anything because in fact, it's a new technology. You have to learn a few things. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So a lot of times I have seen people getting confused on what kind of speed they need to catch up with the new world, right? So if you're a developer, if you're trying to learn a new thing, you see that, hey, there's a new framework in the market the next day. You try to learn that. Then you see that there is something new coming up. For example, I'll give you an example. You start with React, right? You see that Next.js has come up. Then you start with Next. Then you see Blitz.js, which is built on Next, is now there. Then you start with that. You see remixes out there, which is people say better than Next and so on. So it's almost like a technology paralysis where you are left with so many choices that eventually most of the people don't even get to pick one and master it. And that's exactly the problem with this whole approach. That is, you don't need a lot of technologies to be known as a master or called as a master. The secret to becoming a great developer is not that you need to know so many things. It's just that you need to know a very few things really, really well. And this is, this is I can tell you something from my personal experience as well. A lot of people, tell me that how or ask me that how am I able to learn so many things quickly or how am I able to learn different different technologies so quickly and how have I done it in the past and the truth is that I have not I have not learned and retained all of those things simultaneously at the same time and so does no other creator on YouTube or any developer on the planet when you work with something you would eventually gain a lot more understanding in that compared to whatever else you are doing at that particular point right now there were points in time when I was working with angular right when I was building that playlist on YouTube or building my own projects and that time I was probably very very good with angular and knew how the digest cycles work and how everything works and I'm talking about angular one stuff today if you ask me that I have absolutely no idea I still might understand it once I see the code and study a little bit but I mean in honesty if you ask me to write angular code today I would probably not be able to do that so the point here is that even me who has created a full playlist on angular i would say that i could not write angular right now if you ask me to and to be honest this tech hell is not a new thing it has existed for a very long time at that point there were these mini libraries which were being released on a daily basis or on a weekly basis so in a nutshell what you have to do is you have to take bets right a lot of time it almost seems like everything is shiny and new and you know fancy and stuff but what happens is eventually a lot of stuff just dies out now whether that's actively that means it actually dies out like really the company shutting down the project or whether that's passively in the sense that the usage eventually dies out the maintainers stop maintaining the project and so on so it's very important to take early bets on technologies or tech stacks which you like. For example, I took an early bet on Angular, but then I saw Angular 2 come out, Angular 3, and it seemed a bit over-engineered to me. It seemed a bit too complex to build different applications. I'm not, in no way saying that Angular is bad or something is good, but it's it was just my personal experience with that. At that time, I was also trying out React and I found that much more intuitive to me. And that is the reason I made that shift. React was backed by Facebook, it still is. And Facebook is a huge company. They are using React in their production source code. They are using actively it in everything they are doing. So it's instilled a lot of confidence for the framework in the production environment as well. But that's the thing, you have to take a bet on some sort of technology, whether that's, you know, in your case, if you're just getting started with the React or web development in general, do you want to stick to React or do you want to stick to Vue? Because trust me, you would not be a good developer if you try to master or, you know, try to go for everything, right? You, you, you can only pick a few things you want to get good at. And if you 
just pick the ones where either it's something which you don't like or it's too difficult or it's not useful then you know you're probably going to regret for lack of a better word later down the line so to come back to the question which we were discussing is that what should you do about this insane amount of tutorials and technologies and this and that releasing the problem is in most cases it's not the quantity or the amount of things which are being released the problem is that you are trying to pay too much attention to every single thing right and it's okay to miss out a few hot technology or a few hot trends because chances are that they would not remain that much hot anyway so it's important that you stick to obviously fundamentals whatever fundamentals there are in your field of work and then take bets on technologies which you know are very relevant right now and would stay relevant now this is the hard part but this is also something which you just have to take a bet on right that's why it is a bet once you take that bet you have to stick with it for a while that is you need to make sure you understand the tech inside out you are comfortable with it working in your production projects in your projects side projects in general and then try to learn more about those things which not a lot of people would know that is the internals of how things are working which you're working with and that should be it there is usually or not even usually there's pretty much this is a fact that there are never revolutionary technologies released on a weekly or a monthly basis right they come once in a while and if you're seeing that there's a new javascript framework being released every week or a react framework released every week then it's not revolutionary right whatever you can do with view you can do with react i'm not saying view is not revolutionary i'm just saying that it, it doesn't matter at that point when if you are a react developer and you see that view is the new good thing or if you're a Swell developer and see Vue is going up or React and Swell is going up, any permutation, it does not matter because at the end of the day, what matters is what you can do with the tools you have. The end user of your application in most cases would never really care about what the underlying tech is. So programming is more about problem solving and that should be the bird's eye view of every decision you take in the sense that you might be tempted to jump on the new hot thing but does that add any value to your end user or to yourself as a developer in terms of developer experience and i mean the shiny features are fine but magic comes at a cost right so you have to remember that if you are trying to go for something which abstracts away too much information from you as a developer it might be hard to customize then later down the line so you have to take your own chances you have to take your own bet but you don't necessarily have to jump from one tech to another every month or every two months just because that is the new thing and that way you would never really master the new tech because something else has come now or the old tech which is slowly becoming mature or you know is being adopted at large scale to buy a lot of companies a similar thing applies to web3 as well honestly right now if you're someone who's trying to learn web3 or trying to get into web3 at least what i am doing right now is trying to just get a bird's eye view of everything what's happening in the space and trying to get into some basic fundamentals ethereum blockchain solidity smart contracts how these practical how, how could practical applications be built on top of these tech how do they fit and play with web2 world what are the exact companies components which are different from web 2 or you know the current state of web compared to that so you have to do a bit of your homework sure then you have to stick to the basics and then you have to take bets on the technologies which you think are good right and then just learn them so yeah i mean in my opinion a lot of people create noise in the way that they say a lot of things but they don't do one thing really well and that's that's pretty much the secret and i'm giving you the secret sauce right now you have to do or learn a few things really really well in in my case what i know is html css javascript react basically javascript and then based on javascript react and node and this and that plus personally talking about myself on the system side i know a few things so those kind of things those this kind of tech stack helps you to deploy full stack applications right from front end to back end to servers to cloud and this and that but the underlying things the amount of things which i know i can pretty much write them on a paper in a single line which i know really well right so that's that's something you should remember that people don't know everything all the time they can know everything 
at different times but knowing them all the time is, is just impossible and nobody knows that and nobody even expects you to do that so that is one thing and like not really jumping on every single new hot tech is the conclusion of or is the output of that particular thing that you should not try to learn everything at once so yep that's pretty much it for this small mini podcast session mini talk let me know what kind of videos would you like to see here in terms of discussions i know this is like not a two-way discussion but hopefully this would provide some sort of value to people who are trying to think not on the code or the programming side all the time but more on the carrier and what should I choose and so on. Let me know what you think about this format. That is all for this one. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel to get to know about more such videos, more such formats. I'm trying to experiment a lot here. That is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.